take four, I think, just today. I have been trying to film this video for the past year. Oh my god, my heart is beating so fast and you must be wondering, Maya, what are you being so dramatic about? This video is about something I've really struggled with all my life and it's about my biggest insecurity. I struggle, like most teenagers, with acne. But for me, it started when I was in the third grade and it was because of genetics. It came from blood, it came from my parents. It was way before hormones could hit me and I could blame it on being a teenager like I do now. I guess the reason why I'm making this video is I had people there for me. I had my sister, I had my cousin, I had my mom. And I just want to make this for people who don't have someone to lean on. For people that feel like there's no one who understands and there's no one who's been through anything like they have. If they can find some kind of comfort in me and what I'm saying and in my story, then this will all be worth it. And you might be thinking, Maya, you're being dramatic. Well, recalling your past that, that have a lot of negative emotions and insecurities and anxieties with it isn't really the funnest thing to do. But I like to share myself and my ex experiences with the purpose of just helping other people and that's what my goal is today. The story begins when I was in the third grade and I started getting pimples. It wasn't anything crazy but I did get a pimple here or there and that's a little upsetting for a girl in the third grade. So I started asking my mom if we could try things like the normal skincare things. Those weren't working. I tried proactive, that didn't work. Um, then I asked her if I could go visit her dermatologist and we did and I got a simple ointment. Nothing crazy, but it did help for a while. Of course, being insecure about it because no one else in my class had that problem, I attacked my face with those ointments and burned my skin and just irritated my skin so much. And I remember one day, this is how traumatic it was for like, what, an eight-year-old? One day I went to school and I was trying to hide this burn mark I had gotten from putting too much ointment on a pimple with um, my bang. And I just remember actually multiple kids, you know, asking me what happened and I would make up some sort of lie. I don't even know what it was, but it was probably really stupid. And one kid caught me in my lie and decided to point it out in front of everyone and just said like, oh no, that didn't happen, like that's a pimple. And he was just like pointing at my face and everyone was like trying to look at me up close and they were like looking at this huge zit that I burned on my face. And I just remember feeling so like under the scope of everyone. And I, I grew up thinking that way, thinking that people would only see that part of me and that's all they would see when they looked at me. But really, I was just a young kid and, and kids at that age, they're just, they don't know what they're saying and they don't know the effects of what they're saying. And I just remember growing up, going into fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, it was never bad, but I had pimples and no one my age did. I would get comments that I had a pizza face. One kid said that he could connect the dots with the pimples on my face. One kid went up to me and started um, muttering under his breath, one, two, three, four, just counting how many pimples I had on my face. All those things combined just made me feel so insecure, and it wasn't even that bad looking back. But the way kids treated me, like, I felt the need to wait for when my sister was in the shower so I could sneak into her drawer and take a little bit of her makeup. Every morning, every morning that's what I did. And if her shower was too short or if I didn't have enough time to get her makeup, then that entire day I just felt like everyone was watching me, like I was under a microscope. It got more so extreme my 8th grade year. Um, so I started taking prescription pills. Started with doxycycline, went on to minocycline, some other pills. I kept trying new things and it would work for a couple months and then it wouldn't. And um, one of them actually made me get really nauseous in the mornings. And this was in eighth grade and I would always miss like the beginning of my first period. And my teacher would know it would be because I would be nauseous in the bathroom. I, I just, it was happening so often. She said, I, what's going on? And I said, well, I think it's because of this. I need to go see my doctor. 
And it got that serious that I was just nauseous every morning at the toilet about to just throw up. And it, it, it's, a, it's just a terrible feeling. And so I went to my doctor and we changed it and it just felt like, okay. Because you know your body gets used to a certain prescription so then it stops working. That's what would happen after a couple months. So I just thought, okay, I guess we'll just have to keep changing it. Freshman year comes around and things have completely changed. You go into freshman year thinking you're going to meet new people, make new friends, see new cute guys. It's a whole new life and you want to be as out there as you can be. I went into my freshman year insecure, full of anxiety, and just wanting to hide all the time. I was on a new prescription and it was draining me of my energy and it wasn't working so I was breaking out all the time and at the same time I just wasn't the person I wanted people to see. <sighs> it got so bad that I would hide in the bathroom um, during classes I would ask to go to the bathroom to check myself and I actually remember one day I was leaving Spanish class probably first or second period beginning of the day and I went to the bathroom looked around made sure no one was around me and then I turned off the main light in the bathroom because I didn't want to look at myself in the mirror with such a bright light and then I heard someone coming in coming into the bathroom so I ran into the stall and I heard her, this girl comment like, oh, I wonder, like, why is this light off? It's never off. And I just remember sitting there waiting until she left because if she saw me, she'd wonder why I was some weirdo in the dark. And I just waited until she left. And then I went out of the stall. I looked at myself in the bright light because she turned the lights on and I cried. And it just continued to affect the way I lived my life. I wouldn't like going out as much. I hated taking pictures. When my friends and I would pass by a mirror, I would never look at myself. When we would have sleepovers, I'd wait till everyone was nearly asleep to take off my makeup or when it was so late that we had no lights on. And then it started affecting how I interacted with my friends. I I started lying about why I had to go home super early. I would take Bart home and I left almost every day freshman year right after right when the school bell rang because I didn't want I didn't want to interact with people. I didn't want to see them. I didn't want them to see me with my makeup melting off and everything just showing. And the funny thing is, I started to not even feel comfortable in my own house. And your home is where you're supposed to feel most comfortable and most secure with who you are because they're just your family and I started to cover up my face even in front of my parents I was sleeping a lot because I was depressed I was hiding in the dark in my bathroom when I would wash my face I would only keep the light on behind me and not the actual lights there's just so many things so many ways I wasted my energy on focusing on something that was so minuscule but to me it was my biggest insecurity and that's all the way up to now and I'm more comfortable with myself but I've also learned to not freak out every time I might have a breakout but at the same time it wasn't something I could control it wasn't a breakout that would last for a month or two. It, it was something I was battling with for years. And you get tired of that and you, you just want it to be over. And I just remember one day it was so bad and I just sat there and I started crying. And my mom came up to me. And usually when my mom saw me having these mental breakdowns, she would tell me, Maya, it's fine, like, you just got out of the shower, that's why your face is red. Or Maya, it, like, it's not even that bad, don't worry about it. Um, like, your sister had it worse, or I had it just like you. But this one day was different, and she held me, and she started crying with me. I'm getting choked up. Because she sees her daughter, and she's not the same person. She's not the social happy butterfly she used to be and she's crying and her face is red and she's in pain 
and she just wants it to be over and she can't help but feel like she can't help her daughter and for the first time she tells me I'm so sorry and she says we're gonna find a way we're gonna go to the doctor we're gonna ask them about Accutane I'm so sorry and that's how I knew it was really bad and that didn't make me sad or it actually comforted me because for so many years people told me it's not that bad why are you being so dramatic when all along I just I wanted to someone to see without the makeup just plain raw how I am that it did get bad and I didn't want people to lie and my mom told me what my mom told me actually made me feel better and I felt like okay we can do something to fix this and so we went to my doctor and we I got prescribed Accutane six months later it was all great and here we are now I'm on it a second time and I think it's still something I battle with I'm comfortable in my skin but that's of course with help but I just wanted to make this video for people to know that there are ways out of this and if you need someone to talk to that I'm here and that there are so many people that are going through exactly the same thing that you are going through. For those of you who get a pimple here and then, it's not the end of the world. You can deal with it and no one's going to look at you and see just that pimple. I talk to people on a day to day. I don't know if it's because I have acne, but when I see them, I don't see their pimples. I see who they really are. And I guess it's just what I've been trying to teach myself that it's not okay to hide and that I shouldn't let something on the outside affect me so much on the inside, but it did. And it's understandable because for me, I was taking these prescriptions that were making me tired, less energetic. I was bleeding, I was in pain, I was nauseous most, most mornings. And you just don't want to socialize with people like you usually do. So yeah, that could take a real hit on your confidence and that can really affect you. And I guess what I'm just saying is people need to be more understanding of other people's situations. If you see someone having a bad day, don't assume the worst of them. Just try to be kind. And I guess throughout the years that's what I needed. I didn't need all the smart ass remarks about me wearing a bunch of makeup. But I did have those friends who told me it was going to be alright, told me I looked fine, told me I was beautiful. And that really got me through it. And for those people who don't feel like they have that, I'm here for you and I'm sure there are so many more people who want to be there for you and you just need to let them in. So that is my story. I'm sure there's a lot I left out. It, it was mainly about my story and not about what I've learned. I would like to make more videos in the future about what I've learned and things about just being confident and feeling more secure in yourself, about self-worth. And so I plan to do more videos about that in the future. I just wanted to get this off my chest and share this story with you. And I did. So, thank you for watching. And until next time, I'll see you later.